John or First John. Uh, uh, I think it's First John. And so we're going to start there tonight, and uh, and I've been studying this today. And I tell you, I've got actually I was just reading in my daily reading, and uh, it just began to well up within me. And I just thought, well, I tell you, there's some good stuff there. And uh, so we're going to look at that tonight. We'll start with uh, uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. And uh, I'm going to read a, a good portion of this and probably go over into the second chapter. It's not a whole lot, but we're going to start there uh, tonight. Amen. I want to remind you of the uh, announcements. Uh, this Sunday, we will be in service with uh, uh, Brother John, uh, excuse me, I'll get it right, Jonathan Thacker. Uh, Evangelist Jonathan Thacker and the morning service and the evening service. So uh, be sure to be pray praying and seeking the face of God. And let's come and get and be ready, amen, to uh, receive what the man of God will have for us uh, this weekend. Amen. First John uh, chapter 1, it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ, and these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. These thi this then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and, have no, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, has, uh, Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Then chapter 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perpetuation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, in a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Now, this book is all about having and enjoying an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, the twelve disciples, they all had that for three and a half years. They walked with Jesus. They saw him open blinded eyes and deaf ears. They saw him raise uh, the dead and make the lame to walk. And they saw him do all these things. He, he fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves. And 
He'd done all of these things, and they still had time to learn and to know him intimately. And we know that this book is written by John the Beloved. It, it, he's the one who, at the Lord's Supper, or the Last Supper, uh, laid his head upon the chest of Jesus Christ. He had a very close and intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know if you uh, have ever noticed it, but I have, but but we we know that we know couples from time to time they are legally married but it seems like in their relationship they do not enjoy their relationship one with another they're legally married but there's just some kind of rift there there's just something there that it seems like they do not enjoy the relationship. We've seen the same thing with children being raised in a family, but there seems to always be tension and unrest in their relationships. But John wants us to know that it don't have to be that way. It don't have to be that way as we, amen, live in the family of God and in Jesus Christ our Lord. So he wrote this book to show us how to enjoy our relationship with our Lord and our Savior. See, he wanted to share what they had experienced as they walked with Christ, as he walked on this earth. And that, uh, uh, that relationship and that intimacy will therefore bring great joy in our lives. Amen. How many, how many likes to have joy? Amen. We like to have joy. I'm not talking about joy back here. I'm talking about, <laughs> amen. But we love, amen, to be joyful. We love to have, amen, a, 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 and to be around people with a, a light attitude, an attitude of joy and excitement and anticipation and expectation. Amen. But, uh, and so this, this uh, John wrote these books so that our joy might be full. Uh, verse 3 says that uh, which we have seen and heard, which we have seen and heard as they walked with Christ. They had saw uh, the love of God and they had grown and fell in love with our Lord and Savior. In other words, he's saying, I'm telling you what we have seen and heard so that you too can experience the joy that we have because of our relationship with the Lord. What we have seen and heard. But before we can experience this life, there are some things that John wants to tell us, amen, that we need to know. Verse 5 says, first of all, that God is light. God is light. Amen. How many knows that light is a revealer? Light is a revealer. It illuminates. And light reveals the things that are hidden, the things that amen, uh, may jump out and grab us, amen? Amen, it, it reveals the hidden things, amen. So then he says, in him is no darkness at all. In the Lord Jesus Christ, in our, in our heavenly Father, there is no darkness, there is no shadow of turning, amen. How many has ever seen a, 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 a match, you light a match, put it up against a white background, and shine a flashlight on that match. Have you ever done that before? When you do that, there still is no shadow. There is no shadow behind that match at all. You see, light gives off no shadow. Light gives off no shadow. The only thing light does is reveals the darkness that is, that is there, and thus for the darkness or the object, amen, puts off the shadow. Amen. But light is a reveal, revealer. Amen. God only deals. Amen. So, so uh, in him is no darkness. Amen. Not even a shadow. Light has no shadow. Amen. So God only deals in reality. He only deals in reality and truth. He never deals in anything not real or untrue. Only reality. Amen. So John is challenging us to walk in the light and the reality of who God is and what God says. Anything else would be uh, to walk in darkness or to walk away from the light. You see, we are to take the Word of God, we're to read the Word of God and study the Word of God 
and we are to apply that word to our hearts and our lives, and we're to walk in that light. How many of you, amen, and it still happens today, amen, as we read the word of God, it don't matter how long you've been saved, as we read the word of God, amen, all of a sudden the word of God shines a light on Amen. A certain subject in the word and points out to our lives that we are making an error, that we're making a mistake. And so the light of the word of God shines upon us and reveals the, the things that we need to take care of. And when we take care of that, we repent of that sin, and thus far, we are walking in the light of God, and the light of God is leading us and, and creating uh, a, uh, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but there's been times when I've got up in the middle of the night, and, uh, you know, I, I'm a, this is my home, this is my, my castle, uh, I'm the king and the and the priest of my home, and so, you know, I don't always go over and flick the light on. Amen. I don't go and turn the light on. And so, you know, I know where the bed's at. I know where the wall's at. I know where everything's at. So I'm just going to make my way in the middle of darkness. But lo and behold, as I make the turn around the bed, then my toe catches the corner of the bed, and then there's all kind of havoc going on, and Brenda's jumping up. What's wrong? What? What's going on? And I'm, I'm over there laying in the floor crying like a baby. Amen. Amen. But God knows that, amen, he knows where all the bumps are. He knows where our toes are. He knows where the end of the bed is. Amen. He knows where all of these things are. And when we shine the light of God's word into our hearts and into any situation or circumstance that we're facing, we use that word and we use the light of God to shine it. Then we can walk, amen, in the light of God. Amen. Now, in verse 7, he tells us, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Cleanses us from all sin. Let me read this again. He tells us that, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So here we find when we walk in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us while we are walking in the light. While we're walking in the light. Amen. Then it cleanses us. Amen. He cleans us up as we walk in the light because the light of God reveals our sin as we walk in the light. It reveals it. And when you walk in the dark, you don't see, uh, see things as uh, they really are. You don't see reality. You don't see it in the spectrum that, that God sees. But when we walk in the light, it is revealed so that we can take care of of those things. Amen. But when you walk in the light, amen, you can see all the hazards, all the pit holes, and all the dangers because your eyes are open to reality. You're open, amen, with the mind of Christ. Glory. So in other words, if you walk in the light of God, you're living in reality, and he then cleanses us from our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. He cleanses us from our sins. Now, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, if you see the sin and acknowledge it as sin and repent, He then forgives us of all our sins. Hallelujah. All because He desires to fellowship with us. He desires to fellowship with us. Amen. He, he cleanses us. He purges us. He washes us. What happened immediately, amen, when he entered into the Garden of Eden and, Ad, and Adam and Eve had sinned and they were hiding, amen, immediately as he entered in, 
amen, he made provision for them so that once again he could walk with them, he could commune with them. He took, amen, the skin, the bloody skins of, a, of an animal and he sacrificed and he clothed them and clothed and covered their nakedness so that he could fellowship with them. You see, God is love. God is love. Amen. And a God of love cannot show love unless he has someone to show it to. He has to have a relationship. He has to have fellowship with someone. Amen. So that he can show love. And so he's provided and he's, he has accomplished everything that we need that we can come into a right relationship with him, that we can walk in the joy and the peace and the, and the uh, uh, contentment of knowing that your sins are forgiven, that you so you can worship and fellowship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You see chapter, now let's look at chapter 2 and verse 1. And my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if man, if any man sin, what, uh, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perpetuation of for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. You see, Jesus Christ is our advocate. Amen. We know that we have an adversary. An adversary is the enemy. He is the accuser of the brethren. He's the one who tries to uh, get you to doubt and to fear and, and, to, and, to, uh, and to sin and, and go the opposite direction and to walk in the darkness. But we also have an advocate. When we, have fell, when we fall from grace, when we have sinned and messed up, amen, then we have an advocate that we can go to. Now, advocate means a champion, an upholder a supporter, a promoter, and a protector. Oh, glory to God. That makes me want to run right there. Amen. Our adversary is a champion. Amen. He's got a champion bloodline. Amen. And he defeated the devil. He destroyed the works of hell. Amen. And he rose victorious. Amen. To the right hand of the Father. Jesus Christ our advocate. He upholds us. He supports us. He promotes us and he protects us. Glory to God. That's our advocate. And then it says that he is the perpetuation for our sins. He's a perpetuation for our sins. He is the atonement. The atonement. Now, perpetuation is an action meant to regain someone's favor. Glory to God. Y'all don't all shout at one time. Perpetuation is an action meant to regain someone's favor. We lost favor with God. We lost favor with the Father. But Jesus Christ came as the perpetuation to regain favor of the Father and to reunite, reunite man with God. Hallelujah. Jesus regained the, that favor for us. Amen. Now, uh, how many likes uh, uh, bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches? Amen. Now, sometimes I eat a Miracle Whip on that. I love Miracle Whip. I like it better than mayonnaise. Amen. But sometimes I like mayonnaise. Amen. Chicken salad. Sometimes in chicken salad I like, uh, I like a mayonnaise. Amen. So I like a mayonnaise on my sandwich. Now, now mayonnaise is mostly water and oil. Mayonnaise is mostly water and oil. Y'all didn't know that? I just gave y'all a revelation right there. But how many knows that water and oil don't mix? Water and oil will not mix. You can't put it together. It just won't mix. It just stays apart. Matter of fact, the other day, this is, this is old country boy. He just lost his wits. I went out and I was, I was mixing me up some poison to put out. And I had already mixed it up in, in the bottom of the tank, about a half a gallon in, in there with some water. And then I got the bright idea, well, wait a minute. I've got some diesel out there. That'll, that'll make it a lot faster. So I went and got that diesel and poured it in there. And uh, so I started, shook it up real good. I mean, I got her all shook up. Well, I'm going around the house, and buddy, 
I'm telling you, I ain't seen, it. I, all I'm seeing is just water and suds. I'm not seeing nothing but water and suds. And then when I just about got through with my, with my yard, then I started seeing, amen, that diesel coming out. The diesel. Amen. It is separated. It didn't mix. Amen. So if mayonnaise is, is the majority of water and oil, you've got to have something to bind the two. And so what do they do? They put an egg in there. And that egg grabs a hold of the oil, and then it grabs a hold of the water, and it unites the two, and it gives me mayonnaise for my sandwich. Glory to God. Jesus made it possible for us, amen, to be able to walk in the light of God. Amen. Jesus Christ connected, amen, God and man. He stood the gap. The Bible said that they raised him up on the cross. He was suspended between heaven and earth. He was the propitiation. He was the go he was the go between. He was the binder that brought God down to man. Glory to God. Amen. And and in our walk, amen, is in the light uh, we are connected with our uh, with God through our obedience as we obey the word of God and we come in right fellowship with the Lord through Jesus Christ and the provision that was made on the cross of Calvary. You can't come to God without, amen, Jesus. Amen. The Bible said, no man come to the Father except by me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And so he is the one that made it possible that we uh, once again could have a right relationship, an intimate relationship, and we could come before the throne of grace, obtain mercy for our failures and grace for a time of need. We can come before the throne and ask forgiveness for our sins and our wrongs. We can come before the throne and ask for provision and blessing that he has supplied for us. It's all because of what Jesus has done. Glory to God. And because of what he's done, then we can take the word of God and then we can apply it to our lives and we can walk in the light of God. Amen. And connect, amen, with uh, our obedience, amen, to his command. This connects us as we walk in obedience to his command. Now, chapter 2 and verse 4, let's look. It says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Is the love of God perfected? You see, the love of God is perfected or matured, and, and we move into the next level of experiencing God. We move into the next level of experiencing God. Amen. As we are walking in the light, as we, amen, are obeying his word, as we are keeping his word, amen, then we are growing in the love of God, amen, begins to uh, mature in our hearts and in our lives, and we begin to mature and grow in grace. Our fellowship gets more intimate all the time. We get more close to God. Amen. And, and there is a joy in this relationship. You see, when you see sin, when you address sin by confessing it as sin, and you walk in the right way because you are walking in the light of God, then you are growing in your experience with God. You're growing and maturing in your experience with God. Well, a lot of Christians are not growing in their experience with God. They, they may be going to heaven, but they're not living in the fullness that's available to them from God because they're not, amen, seeking that, re that, that intimate relationship daily with the Lord. They're not, amen, applying the word and walking in the light as God has distributed to us. Amen. You see, we'll never mature in the Lord if we neglect our opportunity to fellowship, amen, with God in His light. In His light. His Word will cleanse you. His Word will purge you. His Word will make you a better person, a better friend. Amen. His Word will make you a better 
amen, a church member. His word, as we fellowship, amen, his word is the light of God that shines upon us, amen. Now, God, des God desires to fellowship with us. God desires to fellowship with us, amen. Uh, the second chapter in verse 7 says, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I, uh, I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past. Amen. You've been, you've been saved. So the darkness is past. And the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in, the, in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. So what he's saying is love your brother. Love your brother. You see, God is love and he is he is a, a relational, uh, he is a relational love, amen. He desires to have that relation. So, and God is love. Now, look at the, the definition. You need to remember the definition of love here. Love means means the decision to compassionately and responsibly to pursue the well-being of another. To amen. Let me read this again. The decision to compassionately and responsibly to pursue the well-being of another or someone else, to bless someone, to help someone, to, to pour yourself in to someone. That's the meaning of love. That's the kind of love that Jesus had as he walked this earth. Everywhere he went, he got involved. He got involved, amen? Praise the Lord, y'all do this every now and then. Everywhere he went, he got involved. He got involved uh, in a funeral possession. He got involved of the sick. He got involved, amen, those who were accused. He got involved, amen, and he brought an answer to the situation. He brought peace, amen, to the situation. So love means the decision to compassionately and responsibly to pursue the well-being of another, to bless someone, amen. You see, if we're self-centered, self-oriented, if we just uh, want God to flow to us and not through us, then we live like we are the only child. We live like we're the only child. How many know some only child? Amen. You know some only child. Them things, well, I am better, y'all better watch out. Some of y'all might be only child. But I have seen some of them that are just spoiled rotten. Amen. How many knows that old song, um, uh, you're so vain. I bet you thought this song was about you. Amen. Those only, those only child, oh, Lord. Those only child sometimes are spoiled. Amen. But listen, we're not the only child. Amen. The Bible didn't say your heavenly Father. Uh, uh, he, he didn't say that we were to pray, uh, my heavenly Father. You're you're to pray our heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father. We are not the only child, but God will flow to us when He knows that it will flow through us to help and benefit others. Amen. Amen. Listen, you don't let the blessing stop in your life. If you let the blessing stop in your life, then it'll stop coming to you. Amen. If it can't go through you, then it won't come to you. Amen. We've got to pass that blessing on. We're blessed so that we can be a blessing. We're blessed so that we can be a blessing. Hallelujah. So when you walk in the light and confess the sin that the light reveals, leading to obedience that will cause you to uh, not be self-centered and to love others, then you open the floodgates to God to operate in your life. Amen. I tell you, most of you that have ministered before, and I remember, and I, and I know I've told you this before, but hey, I've been here eight years, you're going to hear it again. And, uh, you know, the first time that God 
through his spirit and his anointing flowed through me to minister to someone else. The first time I operated or acted in obedience and God's spirit and his blessing flowed through me and touched somebody else's life, it was kind of like, I like it, I love it, I wanted some more of it. Amen. I'm telling you, I couldn't get enough. Amen. So I started reading. I started studying. I started walking in the light. I started getting all that I could so that I could minister and help someone else. And it brought great joy. It brought great joy in, in, in me and in my relationship with God when I started, amen, loving and caring and ministering, amen, to others. It benefited my relationship with the Lord. So don't be like the family, amen, who has a legal relationship, but, but don't enjoy it. Don't enjoy it. You see, God has reconciled us to himself. We've been legally justified, and God wants us to enjoy our relationship and to, and to be friends with him. So here's the culmination. Amen. As you, uh, as as your uh, current condition, well, let me, this is just another little saying. Let me let me add this: your current condition is a product of your past decisions. What you decide to do do yesterday, Amen, dictates your present condition today. Amen. So see if we make the right decision to bless others, to love others, to care for others to provide and, and let the blessing flow through us, then it will help our present condition. It will help us. So we are to walk in God's light, confess your sins, obey his will to help others, and, let, and let's enjoy this relationship with him. Let's enjoy the relationship with him. I'm telling you, it can get better. I know it's good. I know it's wonderful. It's spendifus and marvelous and all of that. But it can be better. It can be better. Amen. Would you stand? Hallelujah. Gracious Father, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to have this relationship. Lord, I rejoice in that. God, I pray that these words, O oh Lord, would minister, O oh God, and Lord, that you, O oh Lord, in the in the coming days, in the coming moments, that you would flood their memory with these words, and as they meditate and and and, and muse over these words, O oh God, and think upon these things, I pray that your Spirit, your power, and your anointing will begin to move and help us, Lord, to walk in the light. Help us to walk in that light and to love our brothers and our sisters in Christ and to be a help to those that are in need that our relationship Lord that our relationship Lord would be enjoyed more and more in you we thank you Lord and we praise you in Jesus precious name hallelujah